hello i think i've gone live on facebook let me just see if i'm going live on insta and my doorbell just went at the same time uh hi everyone hello how are you oh let's just get this sorted out so hi if you're on facebook hello if you're on instagram it's just past 12 o'clock on a monday so that means it is time for me to do my sharing session with you guys to just hi just to help spread a little bit of knowledge and wisdom and help for you if you are a baby massage or yoga teacher whether you're thinking about becoming one whether you're at the beginning of your journey um, or whether you've been doing it for a while and you're a bit stuck and you're looking for some inspiration or just general bit of mentorship this is my gift to you every single week to try to help to advance you um, in your journey as a teacher because when you feel good about yourself and you love what you do you show up in a different way for your clients which creates more energy and love for them which affects how they um feel about themselves and their babies and that's how we create love so love creates love um so today i wanted to talk to you about um imposter syndrome and the reason why i wanted to talk to you about this is because it's coming up quite a lot in my various communities uh, in my teaching communities with blossom and berry and also in my uh, business mentoring communities as well so i wanted to get to the um kind of essence of what imposter syndrome is and what you can do about it because it can be very very toxic for your personal growth and development and it can feel quite heavy and it can feel quite um, like a block and it's based largely around fear so we want to try and look at where those fears are coming from and how to silence that inner cr critic turn the volume down <clears throat> on the idea that you can't do things or you can only do things when and start activating your greatness as a teacher right now so <clears throat> First of all, what is imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome comes from when we doubt our, our own abilities as a teacher, or it could be as a parent, or it could be as a partner or a best friend or a daughter, or in whatever profession you're doing, is when we don't trust ourselves enough and we have doubts about our ability to show up in the way that we want to or to meet other people's expectations. Now there's lots of different layers to this and um, it's interesting to think about where imposter syndrome comes from and largely it comes from a lot of the messages that we receive from when we're very young about what is good enough, what success looks like, um, what successful people do, how they act, um, and also sort of that feeling within ourselves that we should um, behave or look like this in order to be knowledgeable, successful or an expert. Now, um, that whole dialogue around should, what we should be doing, is very, very toxic to our mental health, to our personal growth and our personal well-being because those shoulds are coming from an external, well, they come from an external source initially, but then they actually come to become our internal dialogue and they become our inner critic, the voice that we hear that says, you know, well, in order to um, you know, teach this particular type of workshop, I really should have read these number of books, done this course, or show up in this particular way. Now, whether or not um, you should or should not do that um, is kind of irrelevant because what really matters is whether you personally believe that you are a capable, amazing teacher that has got something to offer and share to empower another person, to bring joy and happiness, community and connection and to take away pain and suffering and so the ultimate question is do you believe that you have that capability now if you have trained with Blossom and Berry and you've done our courses and you're part of our community and you have regular mentorship by me I want to just reflect back to you that you are more than good enough in fact even if you're not trained with Blossom and Berry if you are passionate about what you do if you love what you do and you have a desire or calling to share and to serve and to help other people <laughs> then just that deep desire to show up to, to help somebody is enough for you to um, you know, take that step forward and start to begin your journey, knowing that you are here right now, 
the path is going to be opening in front of you it's going to be up and down it's going to go left and right there's absolutely no way of working out you know exactly what's going to happen we have to surrender to that so the only thing we can ever do at any time is just do our best now um your best is just literally what you can do right now and of course in time through experience as we grow as we learn through positive experiences and ones which are more challenging you will develop and grow as a teacher so yes if you like there'll always be an essence of um you know could you do better could you know more could you read more books could you go on more courses of course there is i I have been teaching for 18 years. I love learning. I know nothing. I know about that much. And I spend a huge amount of my time reading and learning and developing my skills. Because even when I know and I've read all of the books, everything is always contextual anyway. So I can have the perfect lesson plan. I can have read all of the books. But if I can't connect or relate to my clients, if I can't be truly present with them, if I can't be authentic and vulnerable and sometimes mess up and make mistakes, Mistakes, then I'm not going to be fully present as a teacher so that's one of the things that I just really want to encourage you to let go of is that there is this finite point as a teacher where you can kind of stand up and say yeah you know like I absolutely know it all because I've done this course with this person and I've read all of these books I'm now an incredible teacher because that is not a measure of your worth or value as a teacher all that is is a collection of external validating um, experiences that mean from the outside yes you've ticked every single box that you you could about you know collecting qualifications or or doing studies and things like that but ultimately it's how you feel about yourself it's how you show up it's how authentic you are it's what your values are it's whether you're in integrity it's whether you hold space for your clients it's the atmosphere you create it's all of those things which are so important and you know they're not necessarily the things that you even learn when you go on a course you know like it my bookshelf here is full of incredible books about infant mental health and maternal mental health and pregnancy and birth and everything. If I absorbed all of that information, would that make me an amazing teacher? Not necessarily if I wasn't showing up authentically. And, it, and also I'm not going to be the right teacher for every single person anyway, because every single person is different. So you ne you can never be um, perfect for everybody. You're always going to be enough for yourself. The you, d just showing up and doing your best is the best that you can do, and it's always always enough. Knowing that there's always growth that you can undertake. There's always books that you can read, but not because you you know that will make you a better person um just because that's your subject and you desire to learn more and have that passion and you desire to share so it comes not from a place of like ego or box ticking or validation or um judgment it actually comes from a place of kindness and compassion and a desire to just create beautiful transformational experiences for parents and babies so when we um, get out of our own way when we feel like an imposter and say okay if I let my fear of judgment of others and also if I let this judgment of myself rule what I do and how I show up in life what is going to happen so what will happen is you will stay very small you will probably not use your voice um, you probably won't promote your classes and you'll probably feel frustrated as well because if you are passionate and yet you feel this block this limiting belief is keeping you small then you know you also become quite resentful it's quite heavy it actually creates like quite a low kind of vibe in your body so when we get out of our own way and we reconnect to what i call your um mission mantra so what is the reason why you started to teach baby massage and yoga what's the reason why you get up in the morning and go I really want to like create this amazing experience for my clients when we focus on that we allow that self-talk that inner critic to start to be diminished we can turn the volume down on the inner critic and turn the volume up 
on the why and the mission mantra and the greatness and the things that happen when you get out of your own way and just show up authentically, show up and do your best. That is literally all that you can ever do. Um, and if it makes, you know, if it, everyone's journey is very personal. So I don't feel that I, by me sharing this, it's going to help you because it won't. But just so you know, in terms of how, where I am, 18 years into teaching baby massage and yoga, I've written two books on baby massage. Um, I'm an expert for, for Channel Mum. You know, I've written many, many courses on baby massage and yoga. Do I know everything about baby massage and yoga? Absolutely. Absolutely not and thank goodness for that because it means I can spend the rest of my life learning and reading and discovering new authors, new takes, new conversations, um, everything. So the point is about imposter syndrome and feeling like you don't know enough is in my opinion, you know, um, you'll, ne you'll never know everything. Um, you know, and if you're humble enough as a teacher to say, I'm learning too, then that really creates a beautiful space where you can uh, encourage open-mindedness, conversation, um, experiential learning, all of this stuff, which is where the real gold is. So I just would love to invite you to do a couple of things if you are suffering from imposter syndrome. The first one is just to remember that you always can only do your best and that is more than enough. However you show up, if it's authentically, if it comes from a place of love, um, if it comes from a place of compassion and kindness, it, if it comes with the intention of relieving pain and suffering and bringing joy and happiness, then celebrate yourself because you're an amazing human being doing incredible things. So that's the first thing. So please don't let imposter syndrome um, stop you from doing Doing all of those amazing things which I believe humans are put on the planet to do okay so that's the first thing so that's one thing that you can do to 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 stop that feeling of I'm not enough or imposter syndrome when you're teaching the second thing is is just commit to knowing that you know nothing okay because as I said 18 years in I'm still literally discovering books I bought about three books last week um, on related subjects to baby massage and yoga and I've opened them up and there's absolute gold in there and I'm like I can't wait to embed this into my courses and share it so you don't have to say okay so I just do my best so I don't need to learn anything at all that's going to the other extreme you're just committing to the fact that of course we can all learn more we can all unlearn as well and so it's all about being open-minded and committing to maybe every year I'm going to do one additional course or I'm going to read three books or I'm going to watch you know a, a movie or a TED talk or I'm going to listen to a podcast or something that allows you to demonstrate to yourself that I'm here I'm enough this is great but I also recognize that I can always learn and grow and develop at the same time now that's a perfect little balanced sweet spot to be in where you acknowledge where you are and your greatness but you also acknowledge that you've got lots to learn and you're humble enough to step into that space and take that journey to become a better teacher for yourself and for others so the first one is that you're enough and that you're always doing your best the second one is that you commit to being a lifelong student and that you're humble enough to keep learning and number three is to just look kind of back at all of the things that you have achieved and all of the incredible things that you have done so even if you are starting your journey completely at the beginning and you've got no teaching experience at all you might be having severe imposter syndrome right now well I just want to give you some confidence that I was that person once 18 years ago I was that person who knew absolutely nothing about teaching in fact I had a really severe blushing complex about speaking in public so I was really coming from a place where I had a lot of fear and anxiety but do you know what I did I just did it I did my first class was it uncomfortable yes it was did I learn a lot hell yeah was the learning curve like this yep but with after I had done my first course maybe my second course 
I was refining, I was learning, I was reflecting, I was growing, I was asking questions, I was evolving. And then, you know, as things went on, it got easier and easier and easier. So the, so the main way to get over imposter syndrome is really action. So positive, aligned, grounded action with the intention of I am enough, but this is the best I can do right now. I'm always learning and growing and I'm just always moving forward, okay? So when you're starting your classes, you're not moving backwards, okay? You can never go backwards. Um, you can only move forwards as long as you've got this open mindset around learning and taking on experiences and you know constructive criticism and asking questions and all of these things. You can only go forwards. Um, it's when you become stuck and paralyzed with the fear around imposter syndrome that that's when the damage starts to be done because like I say you'll start to feel like you're shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking you just want to get smaller and smaller and then that then stops you from showing up not only in your classes but also in terms of attracting clients into your business as well because your vibration about everything then becomes quite low vibe whereas when you feel confident and empowered and you're ready to share and you're ready to show up the energy that you give out is guys let's do this i've got something that's really going to help to bring uh, joy and happiness into your life and it's going to take away any pain or suffering you've got right now and i just really want to open up abundantly offer and share to you like that is a very different vibe to when you are coming to that space thinking i'm not too sure that i'm good enough to do this if only i just do this if only i just do this so imperfect action is the way to navigate your way through fear through imposter syndrome and through these limiting beliefs and you know i just want you to trust yourself that if you have been brought to this place and you are ready to um, teach, whether you're a student or whether you, you know, you've been teaching for a while and maybe you've stopped, maybe, maybe being in lockdown has made you feel anxious or nervous or you've lost your confidence or maybe you just haven't been working for a while. I just want you to find something in your life that you can connect to whether it's a past experience whether it's a testimony from a client whether it's a book that you first read where you went wow that's the thing whether it's a video that maybe you've listened to me make in the past anything that reconnects you to that why why this work has meaning for you why your mission matters why um why this is so important to you and how you think doing this actually loves the world forward and creates transformation for parents and babies and if you truly connect with that why you will start to feel that kind of like self-limiting belief the fear the blocks it will start to dissolve and your head will appear <laughs> above the fog the clouds will start to move away and you'll feel the sun shining down on your face and it's that sunlight it's that beautiful energizing power that allows you to show up in your classes and really radiate the kind of loving space that we want to hold for parents and babies because remember how you show up affects how parents show up that affects how they show up for their babies so it really is love creates love so give yourself some love today okay imposter syndrome self limiting beliefs that is not self-love that is judgment on yourself that is putting yourself in um, a place where you are not honoring yourself you're not honoring yourself as the amazing human you are who's brave enough to go on this journey to become a teacher uh, which in itself is just incredible so allow those fears to disappear like clouds okay just like know that they, they will blow away and underneath it is that essence of you that power that you can shine as a teacher in your classes and yeah enjoy enjoy that feeling and channel those feelings um rather than letting this fear kind of pervade so let's just see if we've got any comments on this do let me know if you've got some comments dina is saying love this thank you for sharing i think we all feel like this sometimes 100 you know like as i said 
18 years in, like before I do a class, do I get butterflies? Yes, because A, I'm excited and B, I want to do a really good job. And, um, you know, this is what uh, I love to do. I love the idea of sharing. And to, to some degree, when you're a teacher, there's a little bit of it where you feel that you, you know, you are bringing that energy, you are creating that environment. Um, so I wouldn't say it's like putting on a performance because I want you to be authentically you, but holding space for people does require you to um, take the lead. And that can feel a little bit um, scary sometimes, but remember that you're always in control of how you show up. You're all, always in control in what you, with what you say, um, and you, you can only be authentically you, and that is all that you can ever do. And please, please, please give yourself permission to do that. Um, let's see if we've got any other comments here. Um, no, haven't got any other comments um, today. So yeah, so I hope that's been handy for you. Um, it is something that everybody gets. It comes up a lot in my classes and it just really ultimately rests on honouring yourself, self-belief, trusting yourself, knowing as a human that we never get to a point of like being fully enlightened on anything. There's no such thing as mistakes. Um, and everything is just experience and we're in a process of co-creation with every single student or group that we have anyway so we can never fully um, be in control of what we're doing so just surrender to the beautiful process of humans working with humans and have compassion for the fact that that's not always easy um, and yeah most of all just enjoy and fun return to your why and um, you know remember why you love to do what you do so I hope this has been helpful for you today and um, feel free to drop any comments in the box tag and share anyone and we'll be sending this around in our regular sharing session uh, email which goes out every Friday um, so you won't miss out on any of this okay guys it's been lovely to connect